You're not gonna make it as an independent catastrophe property adjuster unless you do this one thing, starting now. This is Adjuster TV, adjusters first. This video is sponsored by Adjuster Pro. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout and get licensed right now at adjustertv.com slash licensing. Hey, Matt here with Adjuster TV, and I wanna talk a little bit about mindset. Now, before you click off of this, you thinking that I was gonna tell you there was some special certification or some license or whatever, it really kinda of comes down to your mindset. And what I mean by that is this, you have to have the mindset and you can click off after I say this sentence if, it, if this doesn't appeal to you. And I'm happy to see you go. Many, many, you know, good luck to you and, and, and uh, fond wishes and all that kind of stuff. But what I mean by that is, is that because independent adjusting um, is sort of a hybrid between a regular job and having your own business, um, a lot of the, the sort of the, the things that make a successful business heavily come into play. And so this is the mindset I'm talking about. So in other words, as a, if, if you if you run your own business, if you have uh, a business that has relies on sales and marketing and accounting and you know managing your expenses versus your revenue and all that kind of stuff, then you want to maximize your revenue while minimizing your expenses, right? And so you want to maximize your sales and all that kind of stuff. With claims you're only gonna have, especially with catastrophe property work, there's only gonna be a limited window of opportunity for you every single year, we call it the storm season, where you can make money. So what you have to do is you have to have the mindset that you are uh, trying to maximize your revenue while minimizing expenses. And, and the, the revenue piece is really the, the part that's that's gonna be the, where you can move the needle the most. The expenses, you can tweak those and kind of like nudge those down or whatever and sort of massage them a little bit less. But in, in the final analysis, it's really gonna be more about like how much work can you get done every single day, right? Because the more work you can do, and I mentioned this in a previous video, the more work you can do, the more claims you can close, the more invoices that you can turn in in one day, uh, it's gonna offset and sort of by percentage shrink your daily expenses like your hotel and fuel and stuff like that, right? So long story short on this, what you need to do is you need to have the attitude and sort of like, um, instead of thinking, well, you know, they're going to give me this number of claims and I'm going to, you know, I hope I do a good job on them. I mean, you, you're going to have part, that's going to be part of your mindset. But what you really want to be thinking is, is, okay, so they're going to send me this work and what can I do to uh, be as efficient as possible, to close as many claims per day as possible without losing quality? Right, that's that's where you find your speed limit on how many claims you can close in a day. It's like, well, when the quality starts to drop off, that's you've gone too far, right? And how can I, uh, have the best customer service, the, the friendliest customer service with the homeowner to where they feel like um, I wasn't just like some robot from the insurance company coming out to deny their claim, right? Even if you deny their claim, um, because you have to, because it's just the policy is what it is, um, you can do that in a way that makes them feel good about it. I mean, makes them feel not bad about it, let's put it that way. Um, and and it, it makes it not seem like you're just a faceless evil insurance company, but that, you know, this is just, there's a way to do it, right? There's a, there's a whole bedside manner thing that you can do. So you need to learn that stuff, right? Because th the more you do that, the the faster you can be while not losing that quality, right? This is so important. You can't just be fast. Um, the faster you can be without losing quality um, comes down to the, to the having a mindset, again, at, of uh, efficiency, right? So how efficient can you be in every little single thing that you, you you could possibly do during the day? From the moment that you wake up in the morning, like from where you set your phone to where you set your car keys and your hotel room key to where you park to how you park. I mean, all this kind of stuff can like, it trims off seconds and things like that here and there. And you're like, yeah, it doesn't really sound like a whole lot. But if you do it on a lot of things, it adds up to minutes and even hours and it can make it easier, right? This is the whole point being more efficient, having a mindset to where you're gonna be as, as productive as possible, it can make it, being really, really efficient can make it a lot easier to do the work, right? Because you can get a lot more done in less time and it provides, you know, builds confidence w within yourself because you're like, man, I closed seven claims, how did I, I closed seven claims, today. holy cow, I can't believe I did that, right? Um, builds momentum and gets you noticed, right? So 
this is part of your quote unquote marketing piece as a business owner, right? So in other words, if you have great customer service, no matter what the conditions are, no matter if, if they got the worst contractor in the world yelling in your face, telling you all kinds of names, trying to record you for YouTube and whatever, right? And you just like grin and bear it and you're unshakable, right? You're unflappable. They can't, they can't knock you down, right? Um, and your your closing claims, you know, a reasonable, good average, three four, three would be the minimum, absolute minimum, four, five, six claims a day, especially on wind and hail. Um, and those are good quality claims that, that stay closed. But a higher percentage of them stay closed without supplements, and especially without supplements for dumb things that you miss because you weren't very efficient and you don't you didn't have a system for scoping houses. You're going to get noticed, right? So people, the a carrier is going to notice you first, most likely, because they're th this is what usually happens is they'll 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 QA your work and then they'll reach out to your manager, and be like, hey, listen, this this guy says you said he's new, but uh, his, his files look great. It looks better than a couple of the other people have been doing this for three years. You know, um, who is this person? Where'd you find him? Da, 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 right? And then they're like, oh. Okay, so you like this guy, right? This is your marketing because then the carrier is going to be like, well, listen, next time we have a big storm, we want that guy because we think that he's got a great future ahead of him, right? Because he seems to get it, seems to click, doing a great job. This is his first storm. This is how good he's doing. We, won't, we can't wait to see what he's like on his 15th storm, right? He could be a general adjuster. We could be like, we could cultivate this person into like a commercial adjuster, whatever it is, right? So this is your marketing piece. So have the mindset that if you do a great job, and you focus on doing a great job instead of just like surviving and just like, you know, your nostrils are just barely above water. If you're really treading water really well and even swimming, moving forward with this, being fa fast, but only as fast as, as, as that speed limit of your quality goes, right? Having high quality and being friendly, if you can do those three things, um, then you'll always have work as an adjuster. There's always gonna be something for you to do because the people that do that, are so rare. And this is one of those things, just a super duper aside. People say on social media, oh, this is over oversaturated, there's too many adjusters, da da da. There, that's true. There, it really is true. But 95%, and I, I that's that's probably a real stat. 95% of those people don't really know what they're doing and are not very good. And it makes it that much easier to contrast yourself as a high quality, efficient, friendly adjuster against. 95% of everybody else, right? They're gonna, because that you are so rare, people that do that are so rare, they're gonna be falling over themselves to try and figure out a way to keep you busy so that they don't lose you, right? Because you're a diamond in the rough and they wanna keep that, they wanna keep the diamond in the rough busy. And that is how you succeed as an adjuster, is how you avoid washing out and failing, is you have a plan and you that plan revolves around being as efficient as possible, having the highest quality as possible, which translated to speed, right? And having a great customer service, great bedside manner, um, being super friendly to the homeowner no matter what. Don't getting, not getting into fights and arguments with anybody ever at any time. That's how you will make it as an adjuster. If you wanna watch the rest of this episode where I answer other questions ad free, as well as get access to a members only segment question and answer. Head on over to adjustertvplus.com and become a member right now.